In Islam, Jana Arabic, Jain Jana, plural, Janet, lit. Garden, is the final abode of the righteous and the Islamic believers, but also the Garden of Eden, where Adam and Hawa dwelt. Firdaus Arabic, Fredos is the literal term meaning paradise, but the Quran generally uses the term Jana symbolically referring to paradise. However, Firdaus also designates the highest layer of heaven. In contrast to Jannah, the words Jahannam, Dozik, and Nar are used to refer to the concept of hell. There are many words in the Arabic language for both heaven and hell, and those words also appear in the Quran and Ahadith. Most of them have become part of the Islamic traditions. Jannah is often compared to Christian concepts of heaven. <laughs> heaven and Jannah While Jannah in the Quran is often translated as heaven in the sense of an abode where believers are rewarded in afterlife, Sma Sama usually place Samawit is also translated as heaven in the sense of the sky, sometimes referred to as seven firmament 229 or seven strong 78 to 12. The seven layers of heaven are thought to be analogous to the seven layers of Jahannam hell. Some sources connect the two in some way. According to Sufi cosmology, paradise is often depicted over the seven heavens, between the eighth and the ninth heaven. In some modern interpretations, based on Surah 2130 and 67 5, the lowest heaven is also interpreted as the observable universe, with the other six heavens beyond, once were a mess together with the earths and later expanded. <laughs> Images and descriptions of Jannah The paradise is described as surrounded by eight principal gates, each level generally being divided into a hundred degrees guarded by angels in some traditions Ridwan. The highest level is known as Firdaus sometimes called Eden or Ilyan. Entrance will be greeted by angels with salutations of peace or as Salamu Alaikum. Furthermore, paradise is considered to be as vast as the heavens and the earth. In the Quran, the garden is described with material delights, such as beautiful maidens, precious stones, delicious foods, and constantly flowing water. The latter especially appealing to the desert-dwelling Arabs, who spend most of their life in arid lands. The Islamic texts describes life for its immortal inhabitants as, one that is happy—without hurt, sorrow, fear or shame—where every wish is fulfilled. Traditions relate that inhabitants will be of the same age 33 years, and of the same standing. Their life is one of bliss including wearing sumptuous robes, bracelets and perfumes as they partake in exquisite banquets served in priceless vessels by immortal youths as they recline on couches inlaid with gold or precious stones. According to Muslim belief, everything one longs for in this world will be there in paradise, they will eat delicious food and drink, and every bowl will have a new taste. They will take irritation which will digest the food and there will be perfumed sweating for the digestion of water. Inhabitants will rejoice in the company of their parents, spouses, and children provided they were admitted to paradise. Conversing and recalling the past, the food in Jannah never rotting and so delicious it will make any person on earth alive without feeling hunger forever. The dwellings for inhabitants will be pleasant, with lofty gardens, shady valleys, fountains scented with camphor or ginger, rivers of water, milk, honey and sharab un tahora pure drink, delicious fruits of all seasons without thorns. One day in paradise is considered equal to a thousand years on earth. Palaces are made from bricks of gold, silver, pearls, among other things. Traditions also note the presence of horses and camels of dazzling whiteness, along with other creatures. Large trees whose shades are ever deepening, mountains made of musk, between which rivers flow in valleys of pearl and ruby. The names of four rivers are Sihan Syr Darya, Jihan Amu Darya, Farat Euphrates, and Nil Nile. Salsabil is the name of a spring that is the source of the rivers of Rama Mercy and al Qadr Abundance. Sidrat al Muntaha is a lot tree that marks the end of the seventh heaven, the boundary where no creation can pass, in spite of the goodly dwellings given to the inhabitants of paradise. The approval of God and nearness to Him is considered greater. According to the Quran, God will bring the elect near to his throne arsh, a day on which some faces shall be shining in contemplating their Lord. The vision of God is regarded as the greatest of all rewards, surpassing all other joys. The true beauty of paradise is also understood as the joy of beholding God, the Creator. 
Besides the material notion of the paradise, those descriptions are also interpreted as allegories, explaining the state of joy people will get. For some theologians, seeing God is not a question of sight, but of awareness of God's presence. The Persian theologian Al-Ghazali said, This life belongs to the world of earth and the world of visibility, the hereafter belongs to the world of transcendental and the world of beings. By this life I understand your state before death, by hereafter I understand your state after death. However, it is impossible to explain the world of beings in this life by any other means than allegories. Topic. Inhabitants of Jana According to the Quran, the basic criterion for salvation in the afterlife is the belief in the oneness of God tahid, angels of God, revealed books of God, all messengers of God, as well as repentance to God, and doing good deeds. Though one must do good deeds and believe in God, salvation can only be attained through God's judgment. Regarding salvation from hell, according to Hadith literature, Muhammad said, Surely a time will come over hell when its gates shall be blown by wind, there shall be none in it, and this shall be after they have remained therein for many years. Still in the Hadith literature, Muhammad is reported to have said, Allah will bring out people from the fire and admit them into paradise. Otherwise some hadiths indicate, that the majority of mankind will not access heaven. According to Sunni Islam, a Muslim, even if condemned to hell, will eventually enter heaven, as in life there are many trials which one must face. This is also a condition individuals must encounter in order to enter Jannah. Or do ye think that ye shall enter the garden of bliss without such trials as came to those who passed away before you? They encountered suffering and adversity, and were so shaken in spirit that even the messenger and those of faith who were with him cried, When will come the help of Allah? Ah! Verily, the help of Allah is always near. Did ye think that ye would enter heaven without Allah testing those of you who fought hard in his cause and remained steadfast? Non-Muslims in Jannah There are different opinions among scholars in regard whether non-Muslims could enter Jannah. Some Muslims and Islamic scholars argued Surah 2-62 indicates Jannah is not exclusively for Muslims. Indeed, those who believed and those who were Jews or Christians or Sabaeans, those who believed in Allah and the last day and did righteousness, will have their reward with their Lord, and no fear will there be concerning them, nor will they grieve. 2-62 on the other hand, other scholars hold this verse is abrogated by Surah 3 to 85 and just applied until the arrival of Muhammad. For example, before Jesus was born, Jewish will enter Jannah alike Christians who lived before Muhammad enter Jannah, but every religious group must accept the newest prophet. And whoever desires other than Islam as religion, never will it be accepted from him, and he, in the hereafter, will be among the losers. 3 to 85. Scholars like Ibn Arabi did not hold the first to be abrogated by the latter, since Islam, in this context, does not apply to Islam as a religious tradition, but to submission. Ghazali distinguished between the saved and those who will attain success. Therefore, righteous non-Muslims will neither enter hell nor Jannah, but will stay in Araf. Further those, who regard Jannah as exclusively for Muslims argue, that Islam is the completed and perfected religion and it is necessary to believe in the whole teaching of God, the prophets and the angels that just can be done by a Muslim, according to the Islamic theologian Sulaiman Atesh, argues Muslims had made a mistake Jewish and Christians made before by claiming paradise being exclusive for Muslims. Further he states, that those who believes in God without associating any partners with him, believes in the hereafter without any doubt and do good and useful deeds can enter paradise, conditions several religions offer. He also refers to the Quran 5-66 that there are good and bad people among any religion, and even not all Muslims may enter paradise. Finally, most scholars agree that non-Muslims who did not hear the message of Islam and non-Muslims who died in childhood are eligible for Jannah as well, and we never punish until we have sent a messenger to give warning. 1715 Topic. Number of people who will enter Jannah Several precise numbers are mentioned in the Hadith literature regarding the extremely high standards required to qualify for Jannah. 
Initially, a select elite group of 70,000 people from the followers of Muhammad will enter Jannah without any accountability of their sins. After the above group, only one out of 100 people from the rest of humanity, Muslim and non-Muslim, would qualify for Jannah. It is understood that despite this small percentage, the actual number of people who would make it to Jannah would be higher, as Allah would forgive the sins of many people, allowing them to enter Jannah as well. Quranic names of Jannah Layers of Jannah Firdaz, the highest gardens of the paradise al -Kaf, al Dar al makama the home Fatir Janital Aliyah Surahs Hakka Gashia Dar al Salam home of peace Yunus al Anam Dar al Akira the home in the hereafter al Ankabat Al Janna this is the most commonly used term in the Quran and Hadith Al Bakara Al Imran Janet al Adn gardens of everlasting bliss Al Taba 72 Al Rad Janet al Qud, the Eternal Gardens, Al Forkan. Janet al Mawa, Garden of Abode, Al Najm. Janet al Naim, the Gardens of Delight, Al Maida, Yunus, Al Hajj. Makad al Sik, Assembly of Truth, Al Kamar. Al Makam al Amin, the House of Security, Al Dukan. Topic: <laughs> Doors of Jannah. According to Hadith, there are eight doors of Jannah. Their names are as following Bab al-Salah, for those who were punctual in prayer Bab al-Jihad, for those who took part in Jihad Bab al-Sadiqah, for those who gave charity more often Bab al-Rayyan, for those who fasted Siam. Bab al-Hajj, for those participated in the annual pilgrimage Bab al kaziman al gaze wa al Afin and al Nas, for those who withheld their anger and forgave others. Bab al Ayman, for those who by virtue of their faith are saved from reckoning and chastisement. Bab al Dikr, for those who showed zeal in remembering God. See also Elysium, Garden of Eden, Isra and Mirage. Riyadh al-Jannah, Garden of Heaven, is a part of Al-Masjid al-Nabawi, Mosque of the Prophet. Topic. References. <references>